I was raised as a feminist. My, mo my mother was a feminist. Um, you know, it, it, it's, it's a complicated subject. I mean, you talk about biology, but you talk about culture. Uh, I'll give you an example of how this works. Sometimes when I work with classes and, and kids in class, I say, okay, everyone take out a piece of paper and a pencil and so forth. Okay, everyone write all the colors, the words for the color blue that they can think of. And the boys write blue, dark blue, light blue. The girls will have many more variations of blue. So, how come? Are the eyes of girls biologically different than boys? No. So how come they see different colors of blue than you do? Or the famous thing, which I don't even believe is true, that the Eskimo language has 42 words for variations of the shade of white. It's sort of a cliché. But it's not really a cliché in the sense that if you live in an environment of snow, then you're going to perceive 42 variations of that snow, correct? The same token, by, I say to the same class of boys and girls, OK, now write down all the positions of a football team. Boys write all the positions. Girls, quarterback, et cetera. Why? So that it has to do with the culture of seeing, which I believe in very strongly, that the way we see the world comes out of who we are, both gender-wise, because girls are taught color in terms of dress, uh, environment, more than boys. It's not that the boys can't do that, but they're not taught that way. Okay, so to get back to your original question, how can I do that? If you accept the notion that much of what we call girls' culture and boys' culture is something that they are taught, consciously or unconsciously, then I, as an observer, can consciously learn female culture. Therefore, in writing these stories, a Sophia, a Charlotte, a Willa from City of, City of uh, Orphans, I have taken the time to try to learn this culture. And I like to think that I have succeeded to some degree.